back, guys. So, uh, I got another shipment of batteries. I found a good deal, a little deal on, on eBay the other day for about, I think I counted like 150 batteries for uh, about 50 cents a cell. So, I wanted to make a little video. I want to make a little video kind of showing you what I got going on here. So, uh, this battery, I've already charged some batteries. So the process with these, uh, you know, I want to do everything off, off grid when it comes to charging the batteries and whatnot. So what I have here, one of my 7S batteries. So I want to charge all these batteries, right? So I made these big things so that I can equalize the batteries. So not all these batteries start off with the same voltage. And before you charge batteries like this, you need to get all the batteries at least you know within a couple millivolts 10 millivolt whatever you need to get all your batteries down to uh, equalized so by running them all in parallel what I did was I made these these trays and I checked all the battery voltages before I put them in made sure they weren't anything that was overly charged or overly discharged so all these batteries were about about 3.65 3.6, 3.7, even 3.8. And so I put them in this tray, let them sit for an hour or two, maybe even overnight. And when I came back in the morning, I spot checked them, made sure, and they're all really close. So now that they're all really close, I can go with the buck converter to charge off this battery, charge all these batteries. Was I think that's like t almost 20 batteries. You can count. But... So now we can charge all these batteries up at the same time without having to use a bunch of separate chargers. All right, so over here, we have these little Lakota chargers. These are, you know, $10, $11 a piece. Just to kind of get it over with, uh, I plug these in, let them charge. So these run off five volts. So using this buck converter, with these little USB chargers, I can use this 24 volt battery, has a BMS on it, so that we don't overdraw from it. So this is just another way to be able to use solar power to do all your battery testing. <clears throat> now we have this fan cooling this off because it was getting pretty hot. You know, you have to, each channel is pulling two amps, which I can show later. I have a USB amp meter type deal. So I just plugged in, re-plugged re this in, so now it's having to kind of recheck itself and, and see where the batteries are and start charging. You can see we're pulling 1.5, 1.6 amps. Now, this little buck converter, pretty sweet little deal. I think I paid about maybe $11, $12 for it on eBay. It's got four ports, and I checked it the other day, and it was pulling two amps from each port. It was able to do two amps. You see we have the fan. It says it's a 12-volt fan. But I'm not sure if, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's try that out. All right, so this is connected to the 12-volt fan, fan now. You can see you can pull in 5.2 volts. That's weird. That's different. You know, it's going up. Usually power will drag it down. That's cool. So it's just 0 0.08 amps at 5.2 5 volts, 5.3 volts. That's pretty cool. 12-volt fan. 5 volt power. Oh, here's some of those Tesla batteries. 21700s. Good batteries. They last forever in the vape mod. All right, as you can see, we're charging all these batteries on the buck converter at 4.8 amps at 385 volts. Got my little fan there to keep it cool because at 5 volts, 5 volts gets pretty hot. I mean, at 5 amps, it gets pretty hot. Uh, this battery was fully charged yesterday. I charged it with the sun, with this buck converter from Drock. Hook it up, set it up, get uh, 44 volts or so, and then this will drop it down to whatever you set. <clears throat> now, I had an issue where I always set my buck converter higher than what the battery it needs to be at. Because I noticed with these buck converters that once 
you set the buck converter to 29.4 volts or whatnot. And once the buck converter hits that mark, it cuts off, right? But it's, it seems to still send the voltage through it and you'll get 40, you'll get the panel voltage out of the other end of it. You, there might not be any power behind it, but you'll still get the voltage. And the reason I know that is because I had in one of my other videos, my mini solar system video. I had... Now this ain't, this isn't the best picture because it has the, the amp meter connected to it. But imagine the buck converter being connected directly to where the, the inverter connects to the battery. That's the issue I had where it allowed the voltage to go all the way through, bypass the battery and go directly into the inverter. Now this wasn't the exact setup. It was on one of my Boston power setups and it, it, it that's how the capacitors got blown. There's no isolation between the buck converter and the battery and the battery and the inverter. So once the, I believe it was, yeah, once this hit at its mark, it just shot 44 volts to it, poof, inverter went up in smoke. Now, luckily I was able to uh, tear down the inverter and replace it, the capacitors. So there was no damage to it except for the capacitors. The voltage, there they were 30, they're 35 volt capacitors for a, a 24 volt inverter and they popped. And so replacing those well, is a little tricky because you have to solder both contact points, but we were able to get it done and it worked. I tried it and put a heavy load on it. It was a thousand watt inverter. And so I put a heat gun resistant loaded on it. Here I have my, my Boston power cells. I'm going to be building another battery like this one over here. I'm going to build another battery like this. So I have three of these batteries and they all are very nice, very nice batteries there. It's about, uh, what is this? 47 times eight, like 48, this is like 48 cells. And that comes out to roughly uh, half a kilowatt, maybe a little under, maybe 480 watt hours. But uh, yeah, as you see underneath here as a, a table, I'm using a, a 15,000 watt split phase inverter and it's 48 volts and I haven't made any 48 volt batteries. So by making these power, these uh, Boston power 24 volt cells, I'll be able to use them on my, cause I have two 24 volt inverters. So th those would be nice for, you know, uh, a, a mini solar system for running whatever, if, if that needs to happen, but uh, it's nice to have the, the option, but I'll be able to run those two packs in series even with the BMS run two, four of the packs in series and be able to power. Cause I still haven't tested this thing out and I want, you know, I want to make sure it works before the warranty runs out. So that's something we might see in a video coming up. So I built these parallel trays, connected them all together. This helps with your Boston power cells, being able to get your voltage across all of them the same. That way when you're building battery, in the form factor of all in one it's a lot less work for your bms and your batteries will stay imbalanced along with having equal capacities across each series that'll help keep your batteries in balance so by doing it this way it eliminates having to the bms to have to balance it, it makes life so much easier